This video will take you through the process of installing a pocket and a zip into the same seam. This is useful for skirts or dresses where you want an uninterrupted back such as on patterned fabric. We will be working with a mock-up but in reality you will have your front and back piece your pocket bags, usually you will have to cut four so that you can do this on your left and right side, two strips of one inch wide interfacing, these need to be longer than your zipper length and your invisible zipper. I will be working with different colours so that you can see. To begin you will take the front and back piece and apply the interface onto the wrong side of the edge of each piece. This will add structure and prevent wrinkling when we later apply our zipper. Make sure the length is longer than your At any stage where there is pressing required, remember to place your iron on the fabric, lift the iron and then move to the next location. Now is also a good time to prepare our zipper for installing later. To do this, take your iron and iron along the edge, uncurling the zipper teeth in the centre. Don't have your iron too hot or too long on the zipper teeth as it can melt it and damage your zipper. Do both sides. Uncurling the teeth like this just allows you to stitch closer and is less chance of the zipper being visible at the end of the process. Set your zip aside for later. I like to begin by overlocking the edges of both pieces. This prevents fraying at the end. Obviously, if you don't have an overlocker, you can use a zigzag stitch on your machine. Make sure you're not cutting any of the material off the edge of your fabric and the knife isn't switched on. Working with the front side only, align your pocket to your pocket notches. Your pattern will determine where these are. You may want to mark on both sides. Right sides together, place the pocket on the top of your piece, ensuring it's in the right location. Use pins to hold in place. You want to align the straight edge of the pocket and the front piece. We're going to sew a box within this area. Mark a place 5 eighths from the pocket notch on both sides. Then join these two points together at the 5 eighths seam allowance from the th straight edge. This will be our sewing line. I'm using chalk as this can be removed. Make sure your lines are straight as it will show on your final garment if not. This is where we're going to stitch. Once marked, add more pins to hold in place before taking it to your machine. This is our stitching line. Remember to backstitch at the beginning and end of your thread and not to sew over any needles. When you reach the corner, make sure that you leave your needle down 
and you pivot the material and then carry on. You will need to do this at both corners. I recommend you cut all threads as you go in each stage of this tutorial. Next, we're going to cut the material from inside this box. So first trim it as shown. You want to leave about a quarter inch border remaining. It doesn't need to be precise, but it needs to be even all round. And then working very carefully, you need to snip into the corner make sure you don't cut the thread if you do it can uncurl later the closer you can get to the corner the neater it will appear and the straighter your lines will be going to top stitch this down now working at 1 8 inch along the top you need to make sure that the stitch begins after this line and ends before that line remember I'm using a contrast thread so that you can see it but in reality you want a thread color that matches your material so that it's not visible you want a nice even line Remember to stop before reaching the horizontal edge of your box. We are now going to turn it round, making sure that the corners are square. If you've not clipped fully into the corner, you may get puckers around here. Flip it back and clip in some more, making sure you stay away from the very corner thread. Press to make sure it's neat and stays in place. Wrong side up, now take your second pocket bag and align it on top of your first right sides together. We're going to stitch around the very edge of the pocket beginning and ending where the red X's are marked which is the edge of your previous stitches, the horizontal lines of the box we sewed in the first step. Remember to stitch back and forth at the beginning of your stitch line. The easiest way to access is by turning it upside down and working with just the pocket bag down on your machine. Work slowly at the beginning to make sure you don't catch any of the fabric. You only want to stitch the pocket bag. Seam allowances aren't that important here. You just want to get a nice even stitch all the way to the edge. Once again, bring it in very close to the previous stitch without going over. Trim all threads. Now we're going to repeat this process going around the pocket bag with your overlocker or your zigzag stitch if you are using a regular machine. Depending on your material you may be able to use pinking shears for this. Before going any further press all of your pocket 
from the back and the front. This will get rid of any gathers or tucks that have been built up in the fabric after you've manipulated it round. You can now see you have a nice straight edge which to work with. Take your back piece and align it on top, right sides together. Pin either side of your pocket towards the end. On your real piece, these seams will continue to extend to the hem or the armpit. Bring your zip and align it with your zip marks. Depending on whether you are inserting this into a skirt or a dress will depend on placement. If it's a dress, like in the example shown at the beginning, you will need to mark the top end of the zipper and the back end of the zipper. We are going to stitch either side. If you are working with just a skirt, you would only need to stitch one end. So we will stitch here along the seam allowance and here leaving the gap in the middle where the pocket is situated. This is how you would do it if you were working with a skirt edge. Sewing from just the bottom of the zipper down. It doesn't matter if your pocket stops in the middle of your zip or it goes completely past it. But I would try not to allow the zip to stop at the same location the pocket starts or stops, as it can be a bit of a trouble area. You sew with your regular seam allowance here. And then you take it to the ironing board and press the seams open. I like to press either side of the opening and then use this to help guide me pressing the, the gap. Measure this to make sure that you get your seam allowance right or else your zip will appear wonky. You will note that on the pocket side that the opening to the pocket should run exactly on the fold. Place your zipper in the gap and pin. I like to pin down one side first, usually the pocket side as this is the trickier side. And align the teeth with the central seam line. Make sure you don't catch any of the front face of the fabric or the pocket. Then hand baste the zipper into place. It's much easier to work with zips at your machine when there's no pins. If you ever need precise stitching, it's always best to hold stuff in place with base stitches done by hand first. off at the top. Repeat this for the other side, making sure the zip is central to the seam. And again, you don't catch the front fabric whilst working. You need the seam allowance loose from the fabric. Tie off again at the top of the zipper. Turn the fabric over and check that your zipper opens uncaught 
and that you can freely access the pocket. If there is any problems, go back a step and repin and rebaste your zip before proceeding. You're going to sew from the top of the zipper down and then the top of the zipper down again, moving in the same direction on your machine. Put the fabric like this at your machine so you don't catch the underside. We're going to use the normal zipper foot and then the invisible zipper foot. Please refer to your machine manual to know what this looks like. Beginning with the regular zipper foot, we're going to stitch the zip into place slightly away from the teeth. This helps anchor everything in place so that when we proceed with the invisible zipper foot, we are not concentrating on getting the zipper position correctly. Make sure you don't stitch over the pocket and trap it under the zip. At the three quarter point, leave your needle down and lift your footer and raise your zipper to the top. Then lower your footer again and continue down to the base of the zipper. Remember to backstitch at the end to lock everything in place. Repeat this on the other side, switching your foot over if required. Now we switch to the invisible zipper foot. Now we are going to repeat the process, stitching from the top of the zipper down on both sides in the same direction. Use your finger to curl out the zipper teeth so that you can stitch as close as possible without stitching on the teeth. When you reach the pocket, pull it out of the way to make sure you do not catch it in the stitch line. If you have not previously installed an invisible zipper, I recommend trying to do this alone without the pocket before trying with a pocket. As previously, leave your needle down to move your zip up and out of the way and then proceed to the bottom. Once this is done, repeat for the other side. Our previous row of stitches with the normal zipper foot has helped anchor this in place so that we can focus more on getting it in the edge here. Next, take to your iron and press. Make sure the folds are nice and crisp in the middle. We now have a working invisible zipper with a pocket on the same seam. If you have liked this tutorial and would like to learn more, please like and subscribe to hear notification of new tutorials posted on this channel. Happy sewing!